G'day fellas and welcome to my English base building guide. Last season I got to Conqueror 3 playing the Chinese, but this season I'm playing exclusively the English in 1v1. Now, the English are actually a very hard civilization to base build, which is why I'm making this video. I used to think Chinese was the hardest, but after playing the English, I've learned that there's a couple of huge things that you need to do as the English uh, to make sure that you're playing the best you possibly can when you're doing your base building. Now, when you start off playing the English, your standard opening might look something yeah. like this. You might send a villager out over to gold. They might build a house. They might build a, a uh, mining camp on the gold. And then you'll start thinking about doing your age up. You might place your council hall next to your town center like this. And you've got your beginnings of a base. But what this actually fails to consider is your feudal age plan and what you want to do in the feudal age. Because there are a couple of big mistakes that we've already made just by doing this. You might be wondering, Chongo, what could those mistakes possibly be? Well, number one is we need to secure our gold. Our gold's really important as the English. If we lose control of our gold, we lose the ability to get our upgrades. We lose the ability to go up to Castle Age. So we really need to keep this gold safe. And by putting this by putting the buildings in the way that we've put them right here, we've actually ruined our start before it's even happened. So let's talk a little bit about why that is. I want to put a second town center down. And for me to do that, I can put that town center down right now on the gold. I can maybe throw it down between the, the gold and, and the wood. This isn't a bad little spot for it. But now I open up a whole raft of issues. My town center, while it's in a decent spot, I don't have the ability to build my farms in between my two town centers, which is where I want to be keeping them safe. And this is our first rule. We need to think about where our town center is going when we're playing the English. Where are we going to be expanding as the English? And it depends on the type of strategy that you're doing. Maybe you're looking to play a little bit aggressive in the feudal age. Maybe put on some pressure and then get that second town center down after about 10, 12 minutes. Your town center on the gold is going to make a lot of sense. Maybe you want to go fast castle, get that king's palace up. And that, that's a town center that would go right next to your starting town center. Just because we don't want to get interrupted when we're making our landmark. But there's also the option for a third town center. And that's where the stone becomes a viable option. So let's look at what a an English base looks like when we play it the... I guess you could say the correct way and some general rules that we can use when we're placing our mills, which are the most important part of English base building. We really want to make sure that we plant our mills in the perfect position when we're opening up with the English. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off the exact same way that I did last game, but I'm going to throw in a couple of exceptions. Number one, instead of building my house on top of my gold vein, I'm just going to build my house towards my wood line. And the reason I'm going to build my house towards my wood line is because this land out here it's not going to be used for farms. I know that because there's wood right here. So this is this immediately becomes great real estate to just throw buildings on that we know aren't going to be helping out with our farm. So, you know, maybe you want to do a, a, an early rush with a barracks. Well, you can throw your, your barracks down there as well because it's towards the wood. So that's the first rule that you can be looking at. The second rule that you want to be looking at is where are those resources and how am I going to orientate my town centers? To protect my farms so what you can look to do is put your mills you see how i've lined up the corner of my town center with the corner of my mills influence this allows me to get the maximum amount of benefits from this mill but of course now i've got the issue where i run into the barracks blocking one of the farms but don't be too put off by that it's not a huge it's not a huge uh, problem What's important is that we're just keeping our farms safe. So look, you might be thinking in the transition period, you're going to drop down a mill, maybe get through that, uh, maybe maybe get through your wheelbarrow. So this is a really good spot. This is a great general rule that you can use. And you can throw this on other sides as well. Look, right here as an example, this is a perfect spot where we can be putting down our mill because it's going to be adjacent to our berry. So I think this is definitely the best spot for us to start off with a mill. And then the next mill that we would place would just be immediately next to that, just making sure that we had the, the gap of four tiles in between. So obviously this mill here, once it completes, it's going to... Let's let's put in a jiffy on so we go a little bit faster here. We'll make sure our mills aren't collecting resources. So you can see we've got our first mill. So I'm going to put my second mill down. This mill will, will go down here. And then our base will get built out that same way. And you can throw down another mill over here. Now, when it comes to our town center, so once we've... Let, let's let's put that mill down just, just, just for the sake of it. So our town centers, we're going to need access to the feudal age to get them down. So when it comes to our feudal age landmarks, normally you're going to see people look to put landmarks like the, the council hall on the gold. But once again, you put the council hall on the gold, what you're going to be doing is blocking a potential town center location uh, if, if that council hall goes down here on the gold. 
So you, you've got to be thinking, you've got to have that forethought about it. So once again, the way I like to do it, towards the wood line, towards, even if it's towards the back of your base, it's okay. Uh, because what you're going to be doing is having your town centers protect all of these, uh, all of these farms. So let's throw down the council hall. Uh, at, at, on this time, it's kind of like towards the bottom of our base, uh, but it, it still feels like this, this still feels absolutely fine. So the council hall goes down and now we can think about our town centers. So let's say we want to do a two town center opening. What I'm going to do is actually delete uh, delete my uh, mining camp, and then I'm going to throw down my town center on top of my gold, just like this. I'm going to move it just so that it's it's 100% up against the gold, and then that way it's also being covered by the the town center. So let's say the enemy, maybe they the enemy looks to come in and push you with a knight or something like that. It means that you're going to easily be able to move these villages back towards the town center and get a little bit of cover, and then that way this town center is then supporting any additional uh, or, or any of villagers that are out here on the gold, and if they get harassed by enemy units, they're going to be easily able to jump inside the town center, easily able to jump back out. On top of that, we're now also protecting our farm. So you can see we've got our farms nice and safe in the back of our base. These guys are going to be very well protected here by these two town centers. So this is always something that we're looking to do, always looking to take care of. Now, when it comes to third town centers, let's say in this situation you didn't want to go for that that uh, that second town center on the gold and you said actually drongo i want to do the three tc build i've been watching a lot of the games and i've been i've been practicing this three tc build where is it where does my 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 tc go actually you know what Let, let's let's start it again because we're, we're doing a new strategy let's start it again and let's talk about a, a, another rule so if you're going for a three tc build this is where you can put your town center on the stone it becomes really important for you to secure up that stone so once again it's it's going to be expanding out towards the wood line. There's there's your house. Mining camp is going to come down over here. Uh, maybe you, you look to drop down a mill, and once again, you're going to be looking for the corners. So look to find the corners. There's a corner right there, so we can place that down. And once again, we're all, always looking to put our mills between our town centers. So I could put a mill down on this corner, but I'm not putting a town center out here. I don't need access to this wood. I've already got my access to wood over here. So I don't need this wood. So I'm not going to be putting my mill here. I'm not going to be putting my mill directly behind my town center. I'm going to be making sure that it's positioned perfectly back over here. And even though this intersects the mining camp right now, remember, we are going to delete that mining camp because we don't need to have that mining camp there. It doesn't need to be there. It doesn't need to stay there. So we'll put our mill down and then eventually our council hall will come along. So we can throw our council hall down, you know, somewhere like this. We've got the mining camp here. Uh, which can go snug in at the front. We'll turn on our cheat so that we uh, can finish everything nice and quickly. And now we start thinking about our first town center that we're going to be adding in. So a mining camp gets thrown down. We always put our mining camp so it's being protected by the town center. You can see right here we are protected by the town center here. And we're going to gather up enough resources so that we're going to be able to get our second town center. And we've got two options here. We can go for our first town center and put it right here. This is a really solid town center location. Uh, and it, it's, it's great because it protects the wood and it also protects um, our stone and it will protect our farms on the inside. The other option that you've got is to put your town center, so delete this mining camp and to put your town center here. But it just it just becomes, a, uh, excuse me, okay, that, <laughs> there we go. I don't know what, what the heck is going on with that. Uh, so this is another option for you. But you want to avoid this option because you're one tile too close. It's, it's complicated, but the, the, the best place that you would, you would be looking to put it would be somewhere around here, and you want to come in nice and snug, uh, just so that you are protected by your own town center. So that's going to be your first TC location, and then your second town center location, it's going to be up here. You're on the back, so it, it's, it's very nice and safe for you. So third TC coming in, and once again, we, we would love to have it between these berries here, but unfortunately, we don't have the space for it, so instead, you're just going to have to go for something like that. And that's how you start your beginnings of the base uh, with with the English. And of course, when you expand out, you're going to be throwing down all your farms around all of your around all of your mills like this. So the, these are the, the farms. And ideally, you're going to want to throw down three sets of farms. So a total of 24 farms. That, that's where, where you realistically want to be. And then this way, we've got very well protected farms. All of these farms are being protected by two town centers. This one here is protecting these farms. This town center here is protecting all, all of these farms. And then this third town center is protecting the farms down here. So we've got a really nice coverage here, making sure that we're going to be fine. And then finally, it can, and comes down to white tower placement. Now, white tower is a bit of an interesting landmark. And I know this seems counterintuitive, 
But there is actually a world where you delete farms to place your white tower down. Now, you wouldn't do it in this game because you've got a really good white, white tower spot at the front of your base, right here. This is a great white tower spot just because the enemy is going to be pushing typically towards the front so that way it can defend. But one of the things that you can do is say, well, I'm just going to delete four farms and I'm going to place my white tower in the middle of them right there. Now, it looks like I've deleted more because for whatever reason, this farm here, when you, when you delete a farm, you can see how it kind of deletes the neighboring farms as well. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and place a farm. Excuse me, I'm trying to... Oh, my, my fingers were... Why is that? There we go. My, my fingers are a little bit off where they should be. Uh, so you're going to be putting down a white tower like that, just in the middle. And just remember, English farms, they're very cheap, so it, it's not a big deal doing this. And then that way you've got this really centralized location where the white tower can defend. Uh, and keep in mind, you're only giving up two farms uh, for each of your mills here. So only a total of four farms. It's not a huge uh, loss. Uh, and it just guarantees the integrity of your entire farming economy. You can see I'm protecting my gold here. I'm protecting all three of my town centers by doing this. So if the enemy pushes in with, with rams, I'm gonna be able to protect the villagers that are sieging down the rams. Uh, over on this front, it's it's not as close, but I'm still protecting the town center to, to an extent. I can keep my longbows in on this pocket, which is something that you will commonly do. You'll be going longbow heavy. So you'll be looking to try and keep this pocket nice and safe. Let's get it. Let's get a few more longbows out. And so with this, you're able to utilize your longbows, you know, maybe throw down your palings, defend this town center, and you've got the white tower that's able to cover you as well. And then that way you can protect everything. So this is another way that you can build the English base. But now we move on to a really important part of English base building. And that is the quintessential English turtle. I like to call this the onion. The general idea is that you want to build layers around your base. You want to have protective layers of walls. And this is a really important part when you're playing a defensive civilization like the English. For more aggressive civilizations like the French, it's not really that important. But for the English as a defender, it's something that you really want to get into the habit of. So what does it look like? What does the onion look like? Well, once again, we'll start off a game the same way that we always would. We'll put down our mining camp. We'll make sure that we throw down our house. This is actually a bit hard to throw down our house just because we've got our straggler trees and we really don't want to stomp our straggler trees. For anybody wondering what stomping the straggler trees is, that's where you build a building on top of a straggler tree and then you lose that straggler tree. We want to keep that straggler tree. It's really close to our town center. It's extra resources uh, that we're going to have access to. So we want to keep it and we do want to use it. We'll, th we'll throw down a lumber camp as well because we'll eventually need one of those. But this is, a, this is our standard English base. And now, of course, we're going to be throwing down our council hall. So we can put down our council hall, you know, maybe go two tiles away from the town center. Uh, that way we can fit, uh, we can still fit our houses in along here. That way we're not losing our straggler trees and we're not losing this area. If we did one tile away, we would be losing the area. So this is our, our little standard opening that we've got. Uh, but let's say that we, we, we are up against a French player and we need to get some walls up. Uh, very, very common thing. So what do we do? Well, what we're looking for is we're looking for places that we can wall. And ideally what we want to do is we, what we want to avoid doing is we want to avoid having really long walls, okay? Because you can make a wall the entire length of the map. The question is whether you should do it or not. Okay, there you go. 525 wood. I click that button and it goes all the way across the map and I protect myself. But that's a lot of wood and that's a lot of time. It's a lot of walking distance. It's not necessary, is it? So... I would say let's avoid doing that. Let's focus on the smaller things, all right? So where's the smallest point in our base that we can wall off to keep ourselves safe and to what I like to call control the narrative. That means control the story. You don't want this story to be, be filled with sentences or paragraphs about how the knights were pillaging your villages and, and burning down your houses. Your story should be about your English longbows killing the enemy units in the center of the map because that's where you want to be fighting. So we're going to take a villager. We're going to say, okay, here's a really good sp place to start. If I build a wall here, what that's going to do is it's going to control the flow of knights. I know that no knights are going to be attacking me. If I get this wall up, no knights are going to be attacking me from under here unless they go all the way around, which that then gives me control. So I'm going to go put a wall down. Now, one of the things I'm also going to do here, which is a little bit more of an advanced tactic. Uh, now, I, I, I will show you a couple ways that you can do this but I'm going to be cancelling the pillars on the end of the wall. And there's a, there's a couple of really important reasons why we do this when we're base building. Number one is because it increases, uh, the, the, or rather reduces the time that it takes to build this wall. It also reduces the resources that we spend on this wall. These little, these little pillars here on the end, you can see right here we've got one and two. If we select all of them, you'll see we have six total units selected, four are palisade walls, two are palisade walls, but these ones are the guys on the end. I know it seems strange. It's just how the game works. It's a silly mechanic and that's just it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these and we're just going to click on the two. I'm going to hit cancel construction. And there you go. Yeah. And so now we've only got four we segments of the wall that we that we want to build. And you and so let's watch what happens if we don't do that. Here's our first wall. Our villager comes in. We've got six segments that we need to build. Remember that. Here's the first segment. It comes through. Villager's going to build it. He'll go to the second segment. He'll go to the third segment. And then he'll go to the fourth segment. But there's a problem. Actually, well, there, there you go. Okay, so now he's going to go do this third segment. And now do this segment. You can see how much longer it takes. This wall should be finished right now. But it's not. A knight could run through. And even this wall, yes, a knight can run through. Because this segment hasn't been cancelled. Take a look at this. Because that segment is not cancelled, a knight can go through here. And that's why it's so important that we cancel the segment. Even right now, if I cancel this segment, now all of a sudden, I can't go through. Because that segment was unbuilt, it it means that the enemy can go through. And what's going on over here? Get out of my get out of my base. So this is a really important reason why we cancel our segments. Because what it enables us to do is get our walls up faster and to get them up for cheaper. Instead of paying 42 for a wall, I'm going to cancel that. And now all of a sudden, I'm paying 28 for a wall. So I'm paying less wood for it. I'm also getting it up faster. So if we look here, okay, I'm going to tell it to build the wall. This is only four, seg four segments, remember? You know what? Let's just, let's just do this. Oh, there you go. And now he's walled out. Now he can't get through. Little guy can't get through. We just walled him out. Only four segments. That's all we needed. And that little sheep, that, that sheep's going to run all the way around. Have a look at this. Come on, little fella. There he goes. He, I don't think he will convert either. He, he, will, he commits to the yellow team. But you can see th that that is the power of r getting rid of those little end segments. So that's really important to do. If you're not doing that, make sure you're doing that. There's a couple of other ways that you can do it. So I showed you the first way, uh, which is where we select the entire wall. And then we just click on the, the lower number and press S. That's the first way. The second way that you can do it is you make the wall and then you double click the ends. So if you double click the end, it will select the ends and then you just press S like that. So that's the first wall that we're going to make in our onion defense. Our second wall is going to connect these two, these two um, wood lines. So we're going to take, once again, a villager. We're going to do that and I'm going to shift click here. I'm going to uh, drag box here. I'm going to hold down shift. And I'm going to select this end and now I'm going to go the two and I'm going to press S and that's going to cancel the pillars on the end. That's another way that you can do it. And so now we've reached this point where we've got the top side of our base is all covered off. We know that there's going to be no knights coming in from here. So we're really happy. But now the question is, well, how far out do we want to go? Do we want to draw a wall all the way out over here? Because we can do that. That's pretty far away from our base. So maybe that's not the best bet. It, it, it's possible. You can do that and then you can, you know, do a follow up wall here. That's a nice, nice little base that you've got. But I wouldn't call this an early game goal. I'd say this is this is a little bit crazy. Let's probably avoid doing this one right now. What you could do instead is just a nice little safe wall. That's a that's a sheep drongo. You're going to need a villager. Just a nice little safe wall. Remember, you're playing the English. You don't need berries. You don't need deer. You don't care about those things. But just a nice little wall, just like this. Once again, you're going to delete the ends. Just this little wall here. Because you're going to throw down a town center, you're going to throw down buildings, you're going to have line of sight down here. And eventually, you're going to wall this in. But you can just go with something just like this. Nothing too crazy. Just like that. A nice, small, little AoE2-esque wall. And this is going to keep you safe from a lot of French knights. Now, it depends on your spawn. As an example, let's just quickly throw into another game. I'll try and do up a wall as quickly as I can. Uh, and we'll just, you know, we'll get, get straight to the point, but... I want to show you that it's possible for you to wall in every situation and you should be looking to do it. So here's here's a great example because we have two wood lines that are on opposite sides of the town center. So immediately it makes it very hard for us to connect them. You can connect them. If, if you wanted to, you can connect these two, but obviously you don't want to be going, doing something like that. So how do you look to play it? Well, once again, you're going to take that rule. You want to connect the wood line to the edge of the map. And this is, this is a great wall right here. I love this wall. This is perfect. And once again, selecting the ends, making sure we have our pillars gone. And then over here on this top side, now there's two ways that you can wall this. You can wall safely for 56 wood, or you can wall a bit more aggressively for 84 wood, but it guarantees the gold. I would be tempted to say, hey, don't worry about that. Just go for a nice little safe wall to start off with. And you can expand like an onion with layers a little bit later. Let's cancel those walls. 
And so now our Palisades are coming up. We want to secure our, our base. But do we want to secure stone? Maybe we've already got our second town center up. Maybe we don't need it. And remember, we're building all of our farms in the back of our base, right? We've, we've gone and we've got our, our nice little ring of farms here. We've got a ring of farms here. Let's cancel that and build like that. We've got our farms here. Maybe we've taken 350 stone off this. We don't need this stone, right? Like, I don't need to wall this stone in. It's not that important. So, maybe I do go for this wall. I don't want it ex exactly like that. Maybe I've got, like, a barracks or something at the front. Maybe there's a council hall over here. And oh, oh, you've got your lumber camp there. But you can still wall around it. Just like that. And now you've got the safety of the palisade walls. So, that's the first step in, in defending your perfect base as the English. But the next step is going to be as I mentioned before, the onion defense. It's really important to build your base like an onion. And so what you should be thinking about is where am I going to expand to next? Okay, my gold's running out. I've got gold back here, but it's running out. All right, well, I want to expand out here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to build a gate and then I'm going to tell this villager that's building a gate, go and build a follow-up wall just across here. It doesn't matter that you've got this, this wall. If anything, this wall is an insurance policy. Let's say a whole bunch of knights come rampaging down across the map and start sieging down your wall. Your villagers, you've only just realized and the wall is burning. It's about to go down. Your villagers hit the, the hit the, the hightail it out of there. They get out of there as quickly as they can and they head towards this gate. The knights manage to catch them, but because there's a gate, they get through, but the knights don't. And now your villagers can come to safety. This is an insurance policy. Don't look at this as like, oh, well, you know, th this, this served a purpose at a time, but it also serves a purpose now as well. So make sure you respect this kind of uh, thing. Don't look to delete this. You want to keep this. But now yeah, yeah. we've expanded our territory out. And now the next question becomes, okay, well, where do we go from here? So let's let's get our inner jiffy on. Let's get our cheats going. Let's aid up to the castle age. Let's throw that down. Maybe we'll put our, our king's palace here over on the gold. Why not? And we'll turn inner jiffy off. And I'm going to put a gate at the front just so I can get through. So now I've reached the castle age. I've stabilized a bit. I'm making like spear, crossbow, and having a good time. Uh, but I'm a bit scared of like the, the constant raids that are coming through. So what I, what I can do at this point is start securing my base. So one of the things that you will need to do uh, is wall in, your, wall in your forest. So you will be eating through this forest. This is your safe forest. It's going to take time for you to get through it. But what you can do is just a nice little wall like that just around it. That way it keeps it safe and you don't have the risk of what's called overchopping. Overchopping is where a villager that's gathering wood on a lumber camp is going to be chopping through the trees and will create a hole that was originally connected to your to your uh, uh, to, to your, uh, your your oh my god I'm, lo I'm losing my mind right here to your palisade walls. So this is something that you need to be very careful of and need to make sure that you focus your wood collection efforts towards the center of the forest. So there you can see we've chopped down one tree and already I can now walk through because I chopped down a single tree and your enemy can come through here. There, there could be a thousand knights flooding in through there. So you got to be really careful about your chop throughs. So now we reach this next point of the game where it's like, okay, we're in the mid game. We're now looking to start. Uh, we're, we're really looking to secure the map and play as the English the way that the English should be played. Where do we go from here? And that's where stone walls get involved. With stone walls, what you're going to be looking to do is continue to segment the walls of the map. The best way to do that, because you can't connect palisade walls to stone walls, is going to be through the utilization of forests. Forests are a great way, and you can do this in team game, or in team games. You know, I've often seen people post the question, when are we going to be able to connect our stone walls to our allies' stone walls? And the answer is, you don't actually need to. Like, of course it would be nice. But what if I told you, you can just take your allies' stone walls which uh, there's an enemy unit right here right now. That's why I couldn't do that. So let, let's say your, 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 your ally is walling across the map. Uh, let's, let's say that this is their, their beautiful big stone wall. All right. And now, now you need to connect uh, your stone wall to theirs. Well, what you can actually do is just say, well, I'm just going to connect my stone wall to this side of the forest. So that's the way that you, you want to be looking to utilize your combination of palisades at stone walls in your defense. So as an example, here, we, we are maybe a little bit scared of late game raids coming through. So we can say, okay, I'm just going to take a stone wall and I'm just going to put it in front of my palisade, just like this. And then that gives you a little bit of a layer of defense from any potential raids that are coming through. But the most important way that you can utilize these stone walls is through the continued expansion across the map 
And what you want to do is start segmenting that, that map. So you're going to take a stone wall here. Look at what we're securing behind this. Okay, and once again, it's, it, we're always utilizing these forests because it makes it very easy for us uh, to mentally draw where these walls are going to go because it's you're just playing connect the dots. You know, it's, it, you're seven years old again, connecting the dots uh, and you're just drawing your walls in between it. We capture a sacred site. This is really, really strong. If we can capture this and keep this safe, that's 100 gold for us for the rest of the game coming in every minute. There's a stone mine down here. All right, and slowly and steadily, we are walling up the map. And you might be thinking, well, Drongo, that's not really that important. Guess what? Slowly and steadily, we continue walling across the map. One of the things that you can do here is uh, look look to delete your uh, your palisades uh, and then connect it to original forests where the game allows you. There you go. Uh, but the, the key here that we're, we're looking to towards the late game is eventually it's going to get to the point where you say, oh, I actually need traders. Traders are really important. And now you can put your market down here and look at that. You've got a nice, beautiful, protected base you don't have to worry too much about and eventually they're going to be going over towards the trading post but essentially that's it that's my guide to english base building i i'm hoping that i've covered everything actually th there is one thing that i haven't covered and and it's it's probably a, a good general rule on uh how to play english uh from a sort of mid-game perspective but the idea with english is that you're going to have an immobile army unless you're playing knights which is a style of english that you can play you're going to have an immobile army it's going to be very difficult for you to to chase after raids so what you want to be doing is is you genuinely want to be uh, walling off the map let's just put down our cheats just quickly so you want to be walling off the map just like this throw down your walls everywhere but you you want to be centralizing your efforts um in in, in your offense towards the middle of the map or towards at least one point on the map that can be maybe you know a, a large gold vein as an example uh where you, where you could be doing it so as an example okay here here let's say maybe your enemy's going for a sacred victory and you can't really contest this maybe there's lots of outposts down here with sprinkled emplacements so you want to come out here so what you can look to do uh let's age up to our next age as well we'll go white tower why not okay is you can then once you've walled up you can then begin pushing the enemy towards that location you come drop a keep in and you want to try and keep all of your infantry together and really force the enemy into a fight with you that's the whole idea with the english is you want to you want to be fighting with them and you're going to continue putting down your production towards that fight throughout the game throughout the game you're going to have so many farms so many mills that you're going to be putting down that you're going to be ringing around here you'll be up to 50 60 uh villagers on farms you're just going to be you're, you're going to be going ham look at that we, we threw down a double mill right why not there's another double mill right there uh you obviously don't want to be doing double mills just a single mill. <laughs> uh, but the point is that your production is slowly going to be moving towards the battle because that's what you want you want your production to head towards the battle so that your reinforcements are going to be more quickly joining the battle because remember if you've got a barracks on the front line and you're fighting and you're losing units right here all of a sudden your men at arms boom 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 they just pop right out of this barracks it's on the front line already so that's how we want to be building our english base towards our enemy with our production like that and don't be afraid to put your production outside of your walls because once you get to the point where you've got 30 40 50 production buildings it's okay for you to, to potentially lose these it's not a big deal you ideally you just want them to be closer to the enemy so i hope that that's been insightful for you guys i hope that this has been a bit of a help for you uh, as always if you're interested make sure you you check out the patreon let me let me throw that one up for you there you go uh check out the patreon plenty of coaching content on there uh, other than that, I hope you guys have enjoyed it and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.